I'd like to start out, or yeah, just uh, once. Uh, so here we see the faces of the weathering. Um, face one, you see a darkening of the wood, and at the face two, you see the graying of the wood. This is when the lignin is fully destabilized, and uh, you see the natural color of the cellulose. That's why it gets so gray. It doesn't mean that the wood is necessarily destroyed, but it just, just uh, doesn't look nice anymore. So, here's the protection that we can give to the wood. First and foremost, the wood itself has a natural protection. Here, for example, I post the European Norm 350 that gives an overview uh, how the wood protects itself. And usually we see in class one, very durable, a lot of uh, exotic woods, a lot of hard woods with a lot of uh, ingredients, tannins, and all these things. So, okay, they protect, the wood can be able to protect itself, but that only goes against fungi and insects and bacteria. So that doesn't mean against UV radiation and the, all the other enemies that I just uh, told you about. In close conjunction that we can do here is give the wood a chemical wood protection. In the sense of a paints and varnish producer, we're talking about the surface treatments and we speak about impregnations. So we put it on top, it's very thin film, it penetrates the wood a little bit and we can protect it against uh, uh, the microorganisms like bacteria or fungi. And the last sentence here that I wrote is very, very important, and you'll see that afterwards. Chemical wood protection is only sufficiently eff effective if we have the prerequisites from the structural wood protection, so that means the building of the wood, and also the physical protection. And this is where we come into play. So let's start out with the structural wood protection. Here are some sample pictures uh, that you know what I'm talking about. So, what we are trying to do with structural wood protection is to keep any water, any moisture to penetrate inside the wood. On the left hand side you see a rooftop where we have covered the wooden beams to protect the end grain. The end grain of the wood is also very vulner vulnerable to moisture. Then also the uh, selection of the wood is very important. You, you see the comparison between a flat bread and a rift bread uh, panel, sorry. Um, then we'd like to keep the wood from the ground. We protect it from the ground, as you see in this uh, picture. Do I have a pointer here? Uh, can I point something? Yeah? No. It doesn't work. Well, anyway. Um, also, the fence that you see, we protect the end grain from penetrating uh, through moisture, through water. On the right hand side, we rather go for the window construction, which is quite important. So, sharpening of the edges, we see the physical, uh, the physical um, effect that... Oh, yeah. Uh, it's getting... Yeah, yeah, it's getting, yeah, quite complicated. <laughs> but thank you, uh, thank you anyway. Ah, there you go. Uh, we see, we sand the edges, we round the edges, because otherwise we can see a thinning of the film of the paint that is around the edges. So very important that we round up the edges. Up top, or like down there, we see the V-joints. It's very important to protect the V-joints, because it's also, um, uh, a location where water or moisture can penetrate the wood. On the right hand side, uh, we see on top, we protect like heavily, heavily stressed surfaces, like horizontal surfaces here in the window. We protect it with metal, something just more durable than wood. And on the, uh, and at the right hand side, in the bottom, we see on the left hand side how it's not supposed to be because there is no there is no throat as we said underneath that allows the water to drip so here it touches the bottom on the right hand side we see a steeper slope which we say minimum 15 degrees to allow the water to rinse off and after and beneath that under that we have the water nose the throat so we can uh, allow, allow the water to drip so again summing up what is important? The wood selection, the quality, of the quality of the wood itself, and the residual moisture. Then, the wood preparation, sanding, very important. So, don't use planed wood and apply directly on planed wood. Um, 
the, the coatings or the paints because it cannot penetrate the wood. And then, uh, for example, yeah, rough sawn wood for claddings, perfect, ideal. And then wood construction, summing up just what we've seen right now. So that means all measurements that uh, prevents the wood to be penetrated from water. So here's two comparisons of a, an example how it should be and maybe an example how it should not be when we talk about structural wood protection. And it is very important to say that structurally protected wood, together with its coating, is, uh, has a significantly longer life than unprotected wood. And there is no coating in the world that can make up for insufficiencies that you have in the wood protection. Then we come to physical wood protection, the shield. This is, as I said before, where we come into play. This is where we talk about coatings. This is talk, uh, where we talk about surface treatments. We try to protect the wood, together with the structural protection, we try to protect the wood against moisture, uh, moisture absorption, so with water repellent uh, agents, for example, and we try to protect it from sunlight and also mechanical damage. How do we do that, for example, sunlight? We use pigments or UV absorbers. Mechanical damage, we can work with two component systems or so-called self-healing technologies, which I'll talk later on. Basically, for the coatings, we can decide between two options or like, like say, two categories. We can decide through the pigmentation where we have not pigmented, transparent, where we have semi-transparent and where we have opaque or covering. Here, the general rule of thumb is the stronger the pigmentation that we use, the better the light protection and also the color stability of the wood. So the darker the color shade is, the more protected it is. The layer thickness, we can also decide where we have non-film forming uh, layers or impregnations, for example, like I talked before, and the chemical wood protection. We have thin layer systems that we rather we rather recommend to use on non-dimensionally non stable wood components. That means facades, that means claddings, that means canopies, that means fences. So wood where we allow to swell and shrink, for example. This is where we use thin layer systems. We have a way, we made a lot more like uh, way better experiences with thin layer systems on these kinds of constructions. Thick layer systems, we usually recommend for limited dimensionally stable uh, components like windows or front doors because they don't swell and don't shrink as much. So summing up all these things is we have a good structural wood protection and then we also use paints that are designed for those purposes and also use a darker shade like we, they care about the pigmentation. But uh, as we humans tend to be, we don't always go for the options that make more sense, that are fun functionally good. We are often led by emotion. And so that's why we see a lot of trends that speak against those constructions. And this is where we can strive as a producer of paints and varnishes, because then we have to be innovative to still protect the wood uh, if it's not protected by the structural elements. So what we see today is, for example, here such things where we want a transparent coating. We want to have to see the wood um, like it's not treated at all. So here we have to be innovative in a sense that we have to work with UV absorbers. We have to protect the wood still against the sunlight even though we don't have any pigmentation. The same we can do for windows, for example, with our crystal clear technology. We can do transparent windows that are coated, that are protected, but we have basically no pigmentation at all in there. Also, what we see on facades quite a lot, um, we see no, wood, uh, no constructional elements whatsoever to protect the wood. And this is where we found that if we have a coating like here, this lignovit platine, where we put some metallic pigments in there, we can really enhance uh, the reflection of the UV light. And at the same time, 
we paint the wood as if, as if it's already great. And this gives great protection to the wood and also long-term stability. This is, a, for example, a project that we did and it's already 12 years ago with now, without any single maintenance coding and it still looks very, very good. We can also do that in color shades, also with those metallic pigments that I, were, uh, that I just explained. Or you can just do a mixture of those, mix different kinds of color shades, like we did for our own uh, production, uh, like production building. Yeah. Also very interesting when we talk about colors, we know that if we use darker colors, darker shades, especially on windows and front doors, they tend to heat up quite a bit. So that means if we use a dark color shade like this one, RAL 9011, it can get up to 80 degrees uh, into sunlight. And the problem we see there is then that the resin of the wood or uh, like uh, ingredients of the wood tend to come out and destroy the coating, for example. And this is where we can counteract with using anti-heat pigments. So that means we use anti-heat pigments to turn down the, uh, the, the warmth or the degrees that are uh, imposed by the sunlight. And then again, protect the wood. For mechanical damages, for example, we can use two component systems, like we did here for those front doors. Um, a two-component system is a varnish where you add in a f uh, hardener to make the wood uh, or like the coating more elastic. And also, we have a so-called self-healing technology to protect windows, for example, uh, against mechanical damages like hail. The way it works is kind of described in the pictures below. The coating has some capsules that allow the paint, or like when there's a mechanical damage from hail. You can see that clearly uh, on the top hand picture. The coating gets destroyed, but then we have capsules inside the coating that are exploding and are refilling the dent that was happening by the hail. So that means the mechanical damage, it's still slightly visible, but what we can prevent with that is that moisture is penetrating inside of the wood. So that means the wood is still protected. And this is what it's all about. So that is it from my part, uh, what, as I said, from the vision of a coatings producer, what we can do to protect the wood if we see also if it's not that protected from structural woods. Um, and uh, to end this presentation, with, I would have a video to see, just to get you a little insight of the productions that we have. Thank you very much for your attention.